Hello everyone, I'm High Treason and I thought this could make an interesting little video, or maybe not. I don't know, some I've got to do, but I'm like, eh, can we get a video out of that? You know, it could be an interesting test. Because that 486SX, one we edited some video with, uh, you, you've seen that, you know, that Dodgy Commander Keen video, uh, it's got an Ethernet card in, it's one of these 3COM cards. Now, this I've only just got, this is from a, another YouTuber called Wayback Tech, I sent him some stuff, he sent me some stuff. And uh, yeah, that's really good. Uh, so yeah, shout out to, to him because if you like my stuff, you'll probably like his. Go and check his channel out. I'll leave your link down there. And uh, yeah, congratulations, Wayback Tech. You're the first person who hasn't ripped me off who I've tried to trade with. That's that's actually really good. I, I knew it wouldn't. I, I, I don't know why. I just knew from the start that the guy was legit. But that aside, you know, that's that's what my 486SX is using. And obviously, little 10 meg ISI Ethernet cards aren't really that fast but now it's got me wondering because as it happens I found something on the internet hold on let me grab it and it was really really cheap for some reason now that that can't be right Visa local bus ethernet you never see that so is that going to be any faster than an ISA one now that, that got me to wondering and I don't know it, it needs testing. Now, the interesting thing there is that the specification for the ISA bus running at its standard clock rate, it has about 66, maybe 67 megabits per second throughput. So that's equivalent to 8.3 megabytes per second, somewhere around there. At least as far as I remember, this is off the top of my head. There's nothing here for me to read off of, so I might be wrong. And that machine it's running at closer to 10 megabytes per second, but uh, 10 megahertz, I mean, I told you I make mistakes. At least I, I caught onto it. So it's closer, it's running about 10 megahertz in uh, there because of what I set it up as. But the thing with that is that's way more than a 10 megabit Ethernet adapter. On the other end, that bus is shared among everything else using the ISA bus. So, I don't know how much of that the VL graphics card relies on, probably only the IRQs and maybe some DMA channels, but you know, I don't know how much that would rely on, but I mean that's going to be pretty bandwidth heavy. The VLB IO controller is pretty much leeching the VLB again, but you know, anything that's on that bus it has to share it. You can't use all those things at once, that's not how it works. In fact I'm not even sure you can do that sort of stuff with the other buses either, but they're probably a bit faster. Uh, certainly VL bus in there at 40 megahertz would be about 160 megabytes per second, I believe. So, yeah, that makes me wonder, will a Visa Local Bus Ethernet card go faster than an ISA one, or is it just a waste of time to really bother with it? And there's only one way we're going to find out, and that is to stop being boring sitting talking to a camera, and to actually get the machine started up, test some stuff out, just download a file off of the local network, I'll just use my FTP server for that, and if you happen to be on my FTP server, you might actually run into the file while I was doing this, so yeah, if anybody went on there and saw a test folder with a 20 meg file in, now you know what was going on with that. So, yeah, and then we put the Visa local bus one and see if it goes any faster, I don't know if it will, I haven't tested it yet, so at this point I honestly can't say and also we'll uh, I'll be pointing out something else interesting about the VL bus slots because I made a mistake when I put that system back together about a year ago now was it? Anyway let's get on with it, I've been talking for four minutes Well, before this ISA card gets removed, it seems only right to test it. It would be a bit of a pointless comparison if we only tested one card. And I can sit here and list specifications and theoretical throughput all day, but that isn't really going to tell us anything in the real world. I'm using MTCP to get a rough idea of the speed the card's capable of. The computer is connected to a very fast Ethernet switch, and this side of the network, much like the other end of it, the one you can see, can connect to my own FTP server directly, removing any slowdown from the local ISP. 
Yeah, well, that's a long story, the ISP. It needs a video, and that's going to happen at some point. The hard drive in this computer is not going to be a factor because it's a compact flash card connected to the Visa Lurkle bus. I've actually measured burst writes close to the 160 megabytes per second maximum of this interface, though it quickly drops to a lower speed, of course. That speed, however, is still in double figures, so the access time being zero on top of that is uh, going to leave everything down to the Ethernet card. The hard drive here is certainly not going to be a bottleneck. I want to point out that initially I forgot anonymous accounts on my server are limited to 20 kilobytes per second download speeds, and I nearly compromised my entire test and my credibility before remembering. I actually sat and recorded for half an hour before I remembered, so now I feel like a complete idiot. However, the correct results are pretty decent, north of 500 kilobytes per second, which seems about right for a half duplex connection which means I can only send or receive at any given moment, not both. Total throughput should be just over 1 megabyte per second. Our result is reflected server-side, so it seems to be accurate. That said, I can already pretty much predict we're not going to gain a lot here. Even 8-bit ISA could theoretically manage this speed and max out a 10 megabit per second adapter, though that's ignoring the shared bus and the overhead that that entails. In reality, a video card drive controller or memory expansion board would be quite likely to use up that bandwidth, because the ISA bus runs in parallel and can only address a single card at any given moment. Plus, without bus mastering, it would be all down to their CPU, and 8-bit ISA boards generally don't have very fast processors. I know for a fact, results are the same in Windows, and that both Windows and DOS seem to send data a bit slower than receiving it, Though I'm not going to test sending data because it's redundant. Now I need to start putting that VLB card in. First though, this is not a plug and play computer, so we should remove the driver from the old card inside Windows. The system will not do this automatically, and it will try to start the card on the next boot. Take it from me, and anyone that worked with this stuff will tell you, trying to start hardware that isn't installed in the machine is never a good thing. At best, you will generate an error message, and at worst, it could freeze the machine completely, which could indirectly cause much worse problems to come up, some of which may not be apparent for months. Now, that VLB card. Right, so we've now seen what the ISA card does, and it's really not that impressive, certainly nothing to write home about, but uh, I suppose I should say that that system is somewhat susceptible to asynchronicity problems on the bus because we are running such tight timing so I mean this test might be a little bit biased and inaccurate in that respect but I don't really see it as an inaccuracy you would have to test it on several systems to get a you know an average it's still a real world test because we're running the real hardware you know it's not like we're using emulators or something I don't know how you would do that anyway but this I can't resist because you may have noticed this thing's been sealed since 1994 and I'm sure a lot of people are going to have collective heart attacks across the fucking internets but it isn't doing anybody any good in that box and it never will do anyone any good in that box and it'll probably just break eventually anyway if we don't use it so it seems to me that that box is going to have to be opened now I actually do like the box, it is pretty cool, it's to the point, you know there's no fancy artwork, we have that yes it works with Netware sticker that used to be on every bloody Ethernet adapter in the world. And it's Windows 95 compatible, which you would hope. It doesn't say it's Windows Chicago compatible though, does it? And it's pretty typical stuff. Uh, you know, nothing you wouldn't expect. It's an Ethernet adapter, it's for VL bus. It's easy to set up and configure, jumperless design. That might cause problems if it wants to use and address my sound card is. Uh, it has support for all popular network operating systems. I hope it has a packet driver. And uh, yeah, we get what you'd expect in the box. So that's, a, that's a nice enough box, there's nothing wrong with it. Let's find out what is in the box. So, there's a nice little seam here. Somebody is going to kill me for doing this. But the thing is, I don't get it, because it's not like the box is going to disappear because we opened it. You know, we get to keep the box, 
could always even reseal it if we wanted to. Some people make a living off of doing that and selling it as sealed in its box. I wonder if anybody's ever done that and sent an empty box. Man, that feels good. Opening that. Now that's what the card wanted. It wanted to be out. Look at that. My fingers have been the first to touch that cardboard in over 20 years. What does it smell like? Oh, it has that, that unopened smell. Hold on. Yeah, let's get this open. How does it open? I wouldn't want to break it. Ah, oh, it's one of these. Quality. Ah, there we go. Look at that. Yeah, I've got to smell it. Hang on. Oh, yeah. New, new Visa Local Bus smell. I've never actually seen a brand new Visa Local Bus card before in my life. So this is the first time. But that there, that is a VL Bus Ethernet card, and that is definitely... It's Ben. How did that happen? The box is a bit crushed up. Bend right back, won't it? It's only the uh, bit on the end. It's the first Burka card I've ever run as well, and that's real VL bus. Look at that! Look, all the traces go out to VL bus. There is pretty much nothing on the ISA side. I, I don't know what those pins are off the top of my head. Look, probably interrupts. Interrupts and power, I would say. Look at all the shielding on that. Man, that's that's cool. Yeah, now we've got to get that installed, haven't we? We can't just leave it there. And look, I don't know what... If people are having a go, I don't know what they're having a go about. Because look, the box still exists. So what we're going to do is... Well, we'll need to be back in there for the drivers. We might as well have a look. We've got a manual. And hey, I thought... Ah, oh, the floppy's in there. I was starting to wonder, actually. I did wonder what type of disc the drivers will come on, so let's have a quick look. We know it's uh, 3.5 inch now. Part of me was worried that it would be a 5 inch and I'd have to faff around converting it. I might as well have a quick look at that. There we go. Oh, hang on. We've got a warranty as well. Because that never used floppy disc, I hope it still works. Well, it tells us there's several more Burka products for networks that we could have bought. Neat. Now that's a pretty in-depth manual, that looks like. I'm well, quite impressed. Okay, well, I'll read that and everything before I start setting this thing up. But yeah, I'm going to go and set it up and then we'll test it. Yeah, I did that. See me. Now I know somebody's going to ask me, so I'm predicting the future right now. The chip is an AMD PC Net 32 it looks like. I've never really had any issue with AMD's PC Net chips on any other interface, so I believe they should be fine on VLB. Only time will tell. Now you might have caught me saying early on in this video that I'd made a mistake with the VL bus. I actually haven't. But I'm going to leave that in because, uh, no, I, I do kind of want to draw attention to this because it's something that a lot of people seem to miss out, me included, but I've just not made a mistake by pure luck. Might as well do something productive while I talk and uh, finish taking the old Ethernet card out there. And uh, yeah, that is that VLBus has, you know, not all the slots are equal. You know, and I know it's bad to say that today with the world being so politically correct, but not all VLBus slots are born equal and so you've usually got master slots and slave slots and your graphics card should really be in the master slot and I thought that only my top slot which has the drive controller in was a master slot it's not the top two are apparently so yeah that means that it's fine you would want the graphics card in a master slot I'm not saying it won't work in one but it'd probably work better in a master slot it's where it's supposed to be now this has bus mastering, so this is going in a slave slot now. I don't know if that's going to have any effect, but we shall find out. Look how clean that is. And then putting it in this manky old thing. They're actually about the same age. And it, ooh, hang on, I have spotted a problem here. But yeah, that, that is uh, something I thought I would point out while I was making this video. So if you're having performance like problems with uh, a VL bus video card, like it's going slow for some reason, Try changing the slot. 
And on that note, if you're having problems on a 486 with a PCI card and your motherboard has VLB, try a VLB card. It might actually go faster because there's a lot of motherboards like the uh, the FIC. There's a uh, First International Computer 486 VIP has uh, FIC PCI. It's bridged to the VLB interface. It's very slow. So, you know, this board at least doesn't have PCI, but it is real VLB at least. So yeah, PCI video cards in that go slower than ISA ones actually, it's a very bad implementation, but the problem I've spotted here is whoever designed this case wasn't thinking of the L bus users because that speaker's in the way. Now, the speaker was originally mounted under that hard drive cage, but I took it off back when it used a hard drive and mounted it in this one in the bottom because I don't really think putting a magnet near a hard drive is a particularly good idea, but as it happens that can go back up there now problem is it's not very easy to get the speaker out there we go and you can by all means laugh that horrible soldering i did when i was still you know just in my early teens it's worked for uh, over 10 years that soldering so i don't really have any plans to redo it you know i don't have to look at the speaker the wire's a bit short but it just reaches it's not getting in the way of anything because of course now you know this computer uses a compact flash card which you can see there and you can see the messy uh, thing I got set up for the PC speaker so I can get it out with the sound card as well and it's easy to confuse it with that that's for a turbo display but it's 5 volts so I use it to power the flash card and as for the heatsink down there this CPU doesn't actually need one it's just there because well, I wouldn't want to lose the heatsink and in my opinion, you should always cool the computer more than it needs cooling. It has an 80 mil fan here. It doesn't even need that either. But uh, yeah, you know, always cool a computer more than is required. So then, if I don't know, say, say the power supply fan failed, you know, if that was the only fan in the machine, then you'd be fucked if you didn't know about it. Because the thing's damn near silent when it's running. So if you didn't know that had broken, I don't think that slot's ever been used. It won't have been, because this motherboard was brand new when I got it, and I've never put anything in there. That's really stiff. It's like fucking a schoolgirl. <laughs> uh, great, yeah, I'm in one of those moods. But, uh, yeah, was, uh, I've lost my train of thought now. It's a while since I've gone off script on something like this, but yeah, uh, I actually haven't written the script yet. I'm going to do that afterwards, you know, because I don't know what's going to happen. This might just blow up, but uh, yeah, if, if your power supply fan failed and that was the only thing cool in the machine, then what are you going to do? You've got nothing left to cool any of this. You know, you've got convection is going to happen, but it's not going to be very good. Probably not enough. You, you're at the very least going to significantly shorten the life of the parts. And even if you had, say, that fan, and that was just enough, that and the power supply fan, one of them failing, still not going to run optimally. It does no harm to run the machine colder than it needs to be. So, yeah, that's kind of why we're overboard on that. Anyway, I'm going to start this up and see what it does. See if it explodes after 20 years sitting in a box. Poor Ethernet card. I feel sorry for it being locked in that box. That, that wasn't where it belonged, I don't think. I think it'll do much better in here. Here we go. Oh no, the Berker Hub 24 Plus, it's a hub. And what's the difference between a hub and a switch? I have a hub actually, I have a 16 port one just down the side of the surfer there. What's the difference? Well, the difference is, a hub is not very clever. In fact, you can build one out of a stack of diodes. So, if you use a hub, you can just be a total asshole to your friends. I do recommend earning a hub. Because then you go, oh yeah mate, you can plug into my network, then let him use the internet on it for a while, and then just print out a list of all the shit he's just done on your network. <laughs> and just like, see the look on his face. Quite entertaining. Uh, I can't do that to my friends, because they all kind of tech savvy, but yeah, I'm sure I'll find somebody to use it on one day. Used to wreak havoc with it at work anyway, because they were a bunch of dumbasses. Uh, I know somebody will ask, so yeah, that's my uh, Ethernet hub there is 100 meg per second which is quite unusual for a hub and it has all the hub things you'd expect and uh, why are those FX? I don't, this doesn't have fibre on it I don't, don't seem to remember it having fibre on it you can see how crap my lighting is that's from a shop that hasn't existed in over a decade that lamp it's from Quicksave uh, there's, ooh, 
I don't know would that you'd really want to hub up far drive. It is a hub. I have tested this. Hmm. Wide operating voltage range as well. 90 to 250 volts AC, 50 to 60 hertz. That's very unusual. I, I wouldn't recommend using these day to day now though. Uh, yeah, especially not if you give a damn about security at all because of what I just spoke about. They're uh, rather old archaic technology, don't have any place in today's world, but it's all part of the progression, you know, they had to exist. I mean, uh, it's like thick Ethernet had to exist. Oh, I hated working with that stuff. That's one thing, it's actually on a list of things I refuse to ever touch. Can't stand it. But yeah, let's get this uh, card tested. And I just can't resist recording this here. Oh man, yeah, that's nice and stiff. That's, that's the way to do it. That has never been used before. That's cool. Looks a bit weird now, this uh, back panel with everything uh, everything sort of squeezed into one place. That switch, that changes the bus speed in the computer. I put it in back when I was using a Pentium overdrive. I don't use it anymore now. Uh, it's still wired up. And in case anybody's wondering where the poor quality light is coming from, it is coming from uh, my cell phone. <laughs> that is my cell phone. That I'm not kidding me, that's what I use. I'm not really seeing any need in buying a new one, it works. With the card installed, we now have to provide software so we can actually use it. I can't get the card to work in MS-DOS, but that's not too important at the moment, as we can still test it in Windows. The driver is available in Windows 95 natively. In fact, the 95 driver isn't even available on the floppy disk. Though I suppose the version from Windows 95 was probably the latest driver at the time the card would have been made, given that it has a copyright date of 1994 on the box. The source code for the MS-DOS driver is included on the uh, floppy drive though, and the packet driver does come with some pretty neat utilities. I'm not sure they'd be any real use, I certainly haven't any use for them, but it's nice to have them and see that whoever wrote this put the effort in. Unfortunately, the installation did not go smoothly. I'm inclined to say this might be the fault of Windows Chicago 189, as I haven't really had any serious issues with AMD PC net adapters in other systems. They're one of those devices that just works without making a fuss. Nothing to write home about, but nothing really shitty either. They just do what they're supposed to do. Sucks though, because when Chicago throws a fit, it really throws a fit. On the other end, MS-DOS is a no-go. No matter what I do to the packet driver, it just misbehaves, and it's not really immediately obvious what I should load anyway. The documentation in the manual is also pretty piss-poor on the DOS side of things, so for all I know, I might be doing it wrong. There's no way of knowing. The configuration tools are pretty nice, though, and perhaps the card simply doesn't get on with this machine. This sort of thing used to happen quite often with old computers, old PCs anyway. I've probably played with this thing for way too long today. Well, I'll be honest with you, at this point my patience is about exhausted with this thing. But I think I'm still going to use this video anyway, even if I don't get it working. But I'm going to stop playing with it soon because my temper's starting to run out. To make matters worse, I don't know what they printed this book with, but every time I hold it for any length of time, my hands, my fingers start going really tingly, my nose is burning like I've got an allergy going, so I don't know what they've printed it with, but some are not very nice I'm guessing but yeah I can get it the light comes on on my switch and then as soon as you try and do it it just goes out and it just drops a link and the packet driver randomly unloads which obviously we know isn't the computer especially not when it's in DOS when it's in Windows we can give it the benefit of the doubt that the operating system just doesn't like it because it's a beta operating system in DOS mode that's not the thing and we've already had other cards working in here and they've all worked so I don't know why this one doesn't. It's quite annoying how it's stuck on IRQ9 or IRQ11. I always feel uncomfortable saying those two numbers close together. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. I always used IRQ10. So, that's the one that works. The other ones I've always had issues with. But you can't select it. It'll work on everything but that one address. So, I don't know what the hell Berker were doing with it. But, it's quite irritating, I've got to be honest. So, yeah. My last 
things I can think is change the interrupt to a few different ones maybe and failing that change the slot but I don't really want to be moving things around that much but I'll try it and if it works well then it works if it doesn't work then I guess the 3 comms going back in and I'll have to go through all that faffing about with the operating system again because let's be honest it's not really much fun playing with Windows Chicago 189 because you never know when it's going to flip out as it did earlier. I did get the card to work in Windows though after a lot of faffing about. I am using the Windows FTP client now but it does the same thing as the MTCP FTP client. That was a mouthful. Speeds are much lower. In fact we're looking at 400 kilobytes per second. Rather disappointing. Again, this is reflected server side, so I know that that is accurate. We have this other recurring problem that once I've tried to use the card, if I restart the computer, it locks on booting Windows up like that. I don't know what the hell it's doing. It shuts the light off on the switch and it locks the machine. So I really don't get it. Maybe it just doesn't work. And I mean, this is the thing. If that's the case, then it's proof that you know, further proof as to what I've always said about this shit, that if you lock something up in a box like that, it's not going to work when you actually want it to work. Now, I don't think the guy it came from was a collector, I think it's just, like, a card that was never used from somewhere, but a lot of collectors do keep things in boxes, and, you know, that's really silly. I mean, you're, you're just fucking wasting it. This is what'll happen, you know, in the future, if somebody wants to use that, then... You know, you think I'm devaluing it by opening. I'm not devaluing shit because I'm getting use out of it. I'm enjoying it. That's the value of it to me is that I'm using it and I'm having fun with it. You know, and I'm getting mad at this now, but it's, it gives me something to do. I'd rather have something to do. I, I actually quite like trying to troubleshoot things, even though it can be irritating. So, you know, you're probably devaluing it more because you're just turning it into a paperweight. Whereas, you know, I'm at least having fun with it, even if the eventual result is the same. Probably take longer. It's not good for electronics not to use them. It's like having a car and never driving it. You know, it fucks it up. If it's a car, all well, the oil will run to one part of the engine, it'll seize up eventually. You know, the electronics aren't dissimilar in there. If you don't use them, they seem to fuck up. It's just something I've uh, noticed over the years. I'm not saying it's a bad card at all, don't get me wrong, the speeds seem about right and we're obviously still a half duplex connection. All I'm saying is that there is no advantage to using this card over an ISA one. In fact, it's noticeably slower here. A point of interest would be that Visa Local Bus would probably see an improvement from a 100 megabit per second adapter, as it actually should be capable of running one, or has adequate throughput at least. Even at 25 megahertz, you would still have at least 800 megabit per second throughput on the bus. In fact, at 33 megahertz, the throughput is identical to 33 megahertz PCI at about 1066 megabits per second, which would be enough for gigabit Ethernet. Why you would want to install it in a 486, I do not know, and I doubt if such a device exists. It certainly wouldn't be very useful if it did. In my system at 40 MHz, throughput should be about 1280 megabits per second or 160 megabytes per second. This doesn't account for overhead though because we are running other things on the bus and I'm unclear as to how much it actually shares between the cards. I tried 33 MHz with this card but it makes no noticeable difference to the results or stability for either card. On such a slow machine, I really don't need anything faster anyway. I just thought the VL card was cool. It was pretty cheap. You never see them. I'd certainly never seen one. I hadn't even seen a photo of such a device. And if it had been faster, it would have been one hell of a nice upgrade, as I do like this machine and I use it a lot. But with the average file transfer being between 0 and 40 megabytes, there isn't really much call for a faster card. And the software running it isn't really that quick anyways. I don't think we're particularly losing anything. One interesting effect I did notice, and I can't actually show you, but I do think it's noteworthy. Well, it's hard to hear. And as I say, I can't show you it, but the sound card, the Sound Blaster Pro 2, is ever so slightly less noisy with this Ethernet card installed at the bottom of the case. It is now a long way from the sound card though, and it shares less electrical connections with it, with it being on a different bus entirely. It's only noticeable with headphones, and I can't do anything to demonstrate it. Even if I could, 
I was listening to Horrible 80s songs when I made the video, and I doubt you really want to hear Debbie Gibson popping up in the middle of the video. Besides, angry Asda employees might show up and get above their station again. <laughs> oh well, I want to rent at you for quite a while now, so here I go. Well, there you go. It runs at no faster than the ISA cards, actually slower, and I don't know if that's to do with this machine or what. Uh, we are running slightly slower timings now, but that shouldn't really affect throughput that much. Uh, I mean, that's Visa Local bus at 40 megahertz. It ain't going to impact it that hard. Like, it should still max it out. So really, in the ideal world, you should be able to achieve, what, about 2 megabytes per second? And that's assuming full duplex. I mean, uh, let me see. So this is how I tend to work out Ethernet speeds. Because they're all measured in megabits per second. So I'm still not sure how this shitty calculator in Windows 7 works. I don't like it, to be honest. I'll, t I'll tell you what, we'll do it this way. Now I'm going off script and everything here. I still haven't written the script. Let me close the connection to the FTP. And I'll start recording that so you can see it on the... Oh, hang on. Would help if I type the right commands, wouldn't it? So you can see me doing it on there. It's more interesting than looking at the back of my head. And uh, yeah, so that's 10 megabits per second. So that's 10. Uh, but that is in megabits. Now, per byte, there are 8 bits. So to get the megabytes of that, you would need to divide it by 8. Because there are 8 bits to a megabyte. So we divide it by 8. It's 1.25 megabytes. Which seems about right. So, yeah, I would go with that being fine. Uh, supposedly it's doubled in full duplex mode, but I guess that would be overall throughput. I still would expect towards one megabyte, because you do tend to lose sometimes like 25%, up to 33% on overhead. Because we're using TCP, and uh, you know that obviously accounts for packet headers and just general network chatter that's going to happen. I mean my network can stomach a lot of traffic, it's a very good a good switch I'm running and everything, I'm not running cheap shit in here and uh, it's on a gigabit socket at the moment so <laughs> that, that machine is, isn't going to upset that network at all you know, we've, we've hardly got anything on I've, I've never seen this network chirk so with this whole room going it, it will not chirk, it's, it's, there's a lot of bandwidth to be had so, I don't know, that's actually really disappointing because that's, that's barely hitting 50% of what, what we should be doing. But it does at least prove what my experiment set out to prove, and that is that the, you know, the, the ISI Ethernet adapter is probably adequate, and I'm going to put it back in because I cannot for the life of me get this thing to work reliably under DOS. It sort of halfway works and it stops working, and I don't know, it, it might just not like this machine. But the results are that similar between them that I'm, I'm going to go with them. The fact that that seems to be pretty standard for ISA adapters in everything else that I've got, except things that have slower hard drives. I mean, I don't expect that 286 is going to go that as quick as this can pull things off the network, because the fact of the matter is the hard drive isn't that fast in there. You know, it's going to bottleneck. And uh, the bus is pretty slow as well, to be honest, but I don't know what's up with it. It's just a very, very slow 286, that one unless you have the patience to fuck around with it. But yeah, that doesn't bother me. I, I built it to go slow, so it's fine. It's actually underclocked, uh, which is why the bus is slow. It's running out like between 3 and 6 megahertz somewhere. It's pretty shitty. But yeah, that, that then it, it proves what I set out to, to find out, because I had no idea, and I, it was actually quite fun. Now, now I'm done with it, I look back, and as I said before, I'm like, oh, that was quite enjoyable. I didn't lose my temper with it. I got close at times. And it, it was fun to find out whether it's really worth having VL Ethernet. As it happens, it's not. But it was worth a go. And I now own a VL Ethernet card, and they're quite rare. So it's nice to have one. And I'm thinking that it, it probably will get used because it doesn't like that machine. is isn't to say it won't like the other VL machine I've got. My Pentium Overdrive is a PCI system, but it will not run any PCI Ethernet card. The early PCI implementations are always a pain in the butt, and that's one thing that they seem to be very, very piss poor at. You look at find a PCI card that will is guaranteed to work. Some boards are fine, sometimes you get lucky, you know, I have quite a bit, but not that one. 
and it's running a really slow ISA one. Now, I, I was really short on ISA Ethernet cards, and then where Bagsec decides, oh, I'm going to send two of them, I was only sending one, then I've, I'm now probably going to take that one out by overdrive, so now I've got like two of them spare. And I would have had another one out of that, so... No, but that I don't really want to use the the old one out of out of this uh, four eight six. So I think when I put that back, I'm going to put in the one where Backtech sent me because mine gets stuck in the ISA mode for whatever reason. I don't know why, and it's very difficult to pull it back out of it. So yeah, I think we'll put that other card in that we were looking at because it's the same model. I don't have to change any drives or anything. Uh, it's just a different variant. The, the software is exactly the same. Actually, that's the variant I started with on the original one that failed in here. And oh, what a load of faffing about. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, I don't think I have anything else to say. So, am I treason? I'm going to get out of here and write the script uh, for this thing so I can actually put it together. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Although there is one thing that I'd like to draw attention to in the up a corner there. What corners? I don't know, because that camera has some very weird mirroring going on. And I can't figure it out in my head. I am now the proud owner of an Intel Xeon E3-1271. I don't have anything to put it in yet. <laughs> That's the start. So yeah, we won't be buying any more old hardware for quite a while. At most I'm buying some flash cards for an AMD Athlon that I'm building, but flash cards are really cheap. And those will probably just be with the last like dregs of my birthday money I think which wasn't a lot but probably enough to buy a couple of flash cards for the running that Athlon so yeah everything's going to be going on that workstation now I, I'm not really spending out else oh and a couple of transistors for my pro audio spectrum obviously but again that ain't shit that, that, that's like pennies worth of stuff transistors don't cost anything really it's not fairly common type so most transistors you can substitute with a different type anyway. They're not really very complicated. So, yeah, everything's going on new workstation now. But that's not so we don't have things to do here. I'm sure there's plenty more things I can find to make videos out of. At this second, I'm not coming up with anything new in my head, but I do have ideas on the back burner. And I tried to find, because I wanted to show that I had them, just so you knew it was kind of on the horizon said ages ago about 3d effects and stuff uh, it was actually months ago now I think I got a voodoo 2 and a voodoo 3 so at some point when the hard drive from the Athlon's free again because that, that's just a test drive uh, when that's free again I'm going to pull my K6 to pieces and put that hard drive in and uh, install everything but the video driver make an image and then we'll test out some voodoo cards and I'll see if I actually you know I'm gonna change my mind on them because at this moment I still think they're garbage but I've written I've wiped the slate clean I'm gonna start from scratch and we'll see how they fire up uh, you know I never know I may be surprised maybe just the hundreds of cards I have worked with have all been terrible and the rest are really good I don't really think that's likely but it's a possibility and I'm willing to try it so yeah that should be coming up in the future uh, I don't know when, um, obviously I still haven't moved house, so I could still end up at any moment, you know, been pretty much told, yeah, you've got to get out now, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot to say today, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing, I don't force people to watch my videos, I'm not coming to your house and like, you know, grabbing you by the back of the head and being like, you will watch the video, <laughs> uh, it would be kind of cool if I could do that. Yes, no, I wouldn't. I'm, I'm approaching like 700 subscribers, and that's actually, I've said it before about everything, but that's really unnerving now. It's like, now it feels like, it asked for a long time, but it, now it feels really, really like anything I say could have like serious consequences. And not in that I might offend somebody, I don't really give a fuck if I offend somebody that. You know, I'm not, I don't go out my way to offend people, but I, I don't really try not to as such, because it's that's not really my place. I don't get offended at shit on the internet. I, I don't think anybody with a brain gets offended by like people they don't know on the internet. But it's like, if I say something wrong now, like, you know, if I make an incorrect uh, statement about the specification or something, that could be replicated. That's bad, but I do try my best not to do that. But 
uh, I can make no guarantees, but I, I do try my best to make sure everything's accurate. But the thing is, a lot of it is original research. I prefer to actually test things myself. Even if I've read about them, I prefer to test it. And that's an example, because sometimes what you read turns out it isn't accurate. You know, we went over it, the U UMC in uh, this machine, the one-to-one -one clone of the Intel chip. Clearly it isn't, because it, com it performs completely different. So, yeah, that's stuff like that. But So, yeah, I was correct on that one. But, yeah, that, that's about it. Last thing to say, there is one more thing. This video is under a Creative Commons license, and that's something I want to start doing. So, I don't know what use that is to anyone. I mean, it, it means you could press download on it. I don't know why you'd want to do that. But one use I see for that is, A, it makes it pretty clear what I'm, I'm trying to do here, that I'm, I'm not some sellout fuck who's in this for the money. I'm not making them any money. I haven't made a penny off of YouTube. I'm still not a partner. Still don't monetize. It's not... It doesn't interest me. I don't want to do it. Legally, I couldn't even if I did. Not that that would stop me, because I don't really give a fuck about stupid laws like that. I'd, if I wanted money, I'd just monetize and go, fuck the government, who cares? Hate the government anyway. You know, fuck them. But, yeah, putting it creative comes it A, makes it clear that I'm not in this for the money. B, gives other people who might not earn some of this hardware an opportunity. They can now use my video. You can just mute my voice out and slice things up as much as you want. So if you wanted to compare something of yours to some I have that you don't, you could use my footage and I'm not going to come after you for it. You're going to have to put something that in the bottom of your description somewhere that says it's mine, but I'm probably not going to come after you if I find you haven't. Um, yeah, I don't know, I just thought it was pretty cool. Uh, go creative comments like that, because I'm an information channel. Information should be free, unlimited, and total. You know, you don't want to be... Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I thought, I thought that was something, something I've tried to do for a while. I, I've had to change, the, you know, double check everything because I don't want to be using anything copyrighted anywhere and then releasing it under that license. I think that's kind of frowned upon. So yeah, I mean, technically the software and that's copyrighted, but as it's for technically educational purposes, which it is educational, uh, you know, I, c I can do it. I think that's a good thing. So. Anyway, I'm high trees and I'm, I'm rambling. This video is going to be really long, but I don't care. I, my stomach's going bad. I apologise. But, come on, guts, don't do that to me. Yeah, um, I'm going to get out of here now. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the future. There is one positive to uh, all of this, which means, uh, well, this label here. My computers have this on the bottom. You know, most of them, the ones that I don't really plan on changing that much. And, uh, you know, it kind of, it's there in case I forget something, basically. And it saves me having to run benchmarks again, because it has the scores on the bottom there. And as you can see, it scores zero in quick, because there's no floating point unit, it won't run it. I want to update that anyway to include more scores from some other benchmarks, but not on this one, doesn't matter. I can just add it in with pen. They're all in the same order, so I don't have to update that bit. Uh, I was thinking of getting rid of the uh, divider on that column and just writing them right across the two columns. But yeah, I don't have to change that now, so that's, that's good. Uh, on another note, I wonder how long it'll be my, you know, until my dislike troll from Australia starts pressing buttons on it. Yeah, it was pretty good of them to go around and press that on every video. I like that. That boosts my stats. You know, it makes me show up faster in search results because it counts as more interactions. And uh, yeah, anybody with a brain and uh, any amount of maturity would just leave feedback if they didn't like something I've done. Because I'm open to that, you know, if you don't like my video, tell me. Tell me what's wrong with it, I'll fix it. I've done it before. I used to have that annoying spinning logo at the top, but I got rid of that. It pissed me off, actually. And uh, this disc, I'm going to take an image of that, because whilst it is an AMD PC net, which are fucking everywhere, in fact, every bloody virtual machine I've seen lately seems to emulate those and because uh, I do use that, I've said before, you know, I'm like, oh, fuck emulation this, fuck emulation that. I support emulation. Emulation's brilliant. You know, we need it. It's it's very useful. I actually use it to test stuff out. 
and it's great if you don't have this hardware you know you don't own it you don't have the space for it whatever you know it's a good thing but I don't know what use this will be to but I'll image it and it'll go up on my FTP and I'll leave a link to it in the description it'll be a disk image so you can just write to a floppy disk or open it with an imaging tool and just copy the files out in fact I might put the contents of the disk in a zip as well but I'm not promising that because uh, I don't really have the tools to hand at the moment but yeah there we go uh, I'm I treason thanks again for watching and I'm going to get out of here and get on with this and put this machine back together and put it back where it came from which would be on there that's where it belongs so I'll have to move that stuff no that's not difficult right I'm out of here thanks for watching